So, hi. Nice meeting you. Very nice meeting you. How are I you? did. Um, I did see you uh, last year. Was twenty. That's right. That's you right. See me. Quite, quite. Yeah, quite briefly. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, so uh, Ramona was just talking about um, possibly uh, around June, uh, June 18th uh, your time and 19th our time, um, that there's a, a virtual gathering of sorts, but uh, I'm uh, still listening about the details. So um, that, that was the uh, kind of context of what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Um, so sh should I just uh, yeah, briefly please. introduce this? Okay, yeah. okay. So um, it's hosted by uh, Women Startup Lab. Uh, it's been around since 2013. Um, I started with a bunch of other people uh, who's passionate about having more women in tech industry. And we always have been very much a holistic approach of a uh, diverse team will bring more diverse idea. And so we've been doing Accelerator, but uh, uh, what we start seeing is not just the having women uh, being really stronger um, and equipped with many uh, skill sets, uh, but we, wanted, we realized the industry has to shift. Um, there's a lot of unconscious biases. And so, for example, a lot of the entrepreneurs get first to place in the pitch event, continuously get first to place. Uh, women entrepreneur, but second, third, and fourth place, other startups led by men, they eventually get their funding. Now, you know, pitch event isn't the only way to verify, but we start seeing those patterns. So um, after three three years in the Women's Startup Lab, I start thinking, really, it has to be a systemic change. Um, just like hunger, pro, uh, hunger project, hunger problem, not just the giving the food to solve the problem, but systematically how we can educate how can we shift the system and how can we have a um, you know, stakeholder to be involved? So it's not about one point, which is women being better isn't the, really the solution of it. Um, so we've been doing this from Silicon Valley and working with amazing people around the world. But we wanted to elevate the conversation to the next level. And that's why last year we took a bite and decided to do this global event. And uh, on the outside, it is... Um, we instead of a calling a pitch event, we call it a showcase of a top female and female entrepreneur. Um, it's not about competing, compete to win, uh, because who to say which startup is better? It's really subjective. Mm -hmm. And so we really believe it's about elevating a female entrepreneur and they have an opportunity at the global level. And that's why we do this showcase of a top female entrepreneur from different parts of the world. And allowing them to uh, be in front of a different type of people, including the investor, the government, corporate uh, venture uh, team, and even university to join. So that maybe your startup idea wasn't so great in your region, just because your ecosystem might be limited or not thrilled for the type of business. Um, but when you get here, you now have a rest of the world thinking about what's possible with your startup. And so with that, we can bring women at the next level and bringing a stakeholder as a part of it because of global and a stakeholder part of the government or some accelerator or even the venture. They get to see, wow, women are active. Women can think a big idea because um, that's close the door. Many of <laughs> investor friends said, look, I get it, all the data, but my experience has been great female entrepreneur now hasn't really impressed me. And that has a, uh, a lot to do with the limited experience. And it's not really the true reflection of capability and equality of a woman entrepreneur. So to beat that, uh, we decided to do this crazy 24 hour run, a city to city ongoing <laughs> rally of a, a female entrepreneur pitch. Um, that's how it's been designed. So it is a one-day event. It is a cities involved. It is government uh, involved and universities involved. And we really have a conversation about, okay, what else can you do uh, in, in this, this time? And especially um, uh, this uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, many people scare and feel like they don't have control to survive and, and succeed. And this is where we come together. This is where we see different places that we haven't seen. 
And I think having this sort of global togetherness, global rising, let you see the things that you never thought was possible. And so for us, this is uh, a movement. This is an opportunity we want to create so the women, too, um, has freedom to expand instead of being limited or sometimes held back by culture, as you know. A certain culture just really uh, still very, very deeply uh, traditional, and the women are not, doesn't have a freedom. And so I'm hoping that this global activity opens up an opportunity. So that's kind of the nutshell of um, the vision we have. You know, rise women uh, locally and empower them globally. And so that's what we're... That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, it's a very clear uh, picture. So how, how may I help? Uh, I, my, I just checked my schedule. Um, in Taipei time uh, on the 19th, which is a Friday, um, I have a engagement, I think, um, from 9.30 to around 10.30 um, in, uh, in Banqiao. Uh, and I expect that will probably run until like 11 a.m. Um, and so um, I understand that this is a, a multi-time zone event. So one, yes. option, one option is to start really early like today's call, uh, or even earlier, like from mm -hmm. 8 a.m. Uh, Taipei time. Uh, and, and that um, means that I can be around for around one hour. Um, if I need to be around for two hours, we'll have to start 7 a.m. Taipei time and so on. Uh, and so I, I don't know whether the, the Taipei team uh, would be fine with that, but that's how my schedule looks like. Thank you for being open. No, it, it would be wonderful. Um, I have to check uh, just to uh, make sure that we thought through it. But for just the hearing, the schedule earlier is a, a better, I'm assuming, because then um, not just the Asia, but the Western country has opportunity to hear you uh, if you we can have you come earlier. Yeah, and 7 a.m. our time is 7 p.m. Uh, in the East Coast of the U.S., uh, and which is... Like, not ideal, but okay, uh, and it's fine with the West Coast too. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, morning time is uh, uh, great. Now the Taiwan team's uh, pitch session might be slightly different, but again, this is not a physical event this time, so it might not be uh, particularly an issue. So I'm sure logistically we can work it out. But uh, um, I, I think you know, I, I really, I just want to thank you for being open because you know you you hold a, such a uh, special place for many of us and some of um, transparency that you bring you br and having a technology to so try to solve some of the problem uh, human being a human being and and it comes to good and bad certain challenges that uh, we inherited um, but the technology sometimes just dissipate and take us to the next leap and I think that's something that um, you know, you have a quite depth in uh, understanding how technology can impact people. And, uh, you know, something like that you could speak about. And what is the globalizations and how the people integrate? Uh, maybe you have some insight to that. Is there a particular topic you'll be interested in uh, sharing? Yeah, usually I crowdsource uh, my topic. I use a <laughs> software called Slido.com. Uh, oh, Slido, yeah. Yeah, where people uh, just after hearing maybe five or ten minutes of a, a very kind of a broad overview of the interest that uh, I'm working on, um, then just start asking whatever. Uh, and then they can like each other's questions. And the question that has the most number of likes means that I highlight it and sh uh, share about my thoughts about it first. So it's like a, a fireside chat with the entire room. And, and this is particularly useful in a uh, remote uh, context because um, when we're Skyping, um, it, there's endless distractions. Right? There may be other windows, there may be your phone, there may be a lot of other things. It's even harder uh, in face-to-face -face meetings, than face-to-face -face meetings, to keep everybody's attention. Uh, to a long lecture of one hour. It's actually impossible. Uh, everybody gets distracted uh, once in a while. Um, and so Slido is, makes it an active learning 
experience because if you feel the kind of psychological need of pressing like on something, somebody are addicted uh, of that. Um, mm -hmm. They like each other's questions. If you feel the urge of posting something funny, a mimetic picture, a cat picture, something like that, you can do that on Slido. And, and so everything becomes uh, a shared social object that instantly gets reflected back uh, to the yeah. audience. And so uh, that is my preferred way. And, and that also makes it more interesting for me because then I can learn about what are the kind of topics that your audience and your community cares about. That's great. Um, Slido um, founder Peter is someone I knew when he started. He started his company to my company just about time. So we used to go to a uh, uh, food truck and <laughs> used to eat food together. And so it's so great to see. That's all. I, I, I've met um, the, the Slido uh, Taiwan local representative. I'm still maintaining, I'm still in charge of uh, uh, Slido's uh, traditional Chinese Taiwanese uh, translation. Um, and so uh, we, we do have a, a relationship with the ideas of uh, co-creation. It's not just uh, we use a vendor or a software, but uh, we're part of the Slido ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, when, when you hear about um, radical connection, you know, across the culture or across the country, and what kind of, what do you think the uh, evolution of um, us connecting what kind of technology should we look into i mean right now something just the, right in front of us would be using skype and zoom and we actually connect is there any quantum leap or sort of a connection is that technology out there you know that hey you should consider connecting people and be able to uh, collaborate your business uh here's a kind of technologies out there you know just kind of curious any thoughts on how the technology can uh, move us forward? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so there's, uh, broadly speaking, uh, three kinds of technologies that I'm um, using kind of quite regularly. Uh, mm -hmm. One, uh, telepresence, uh, which is um, can be as simple as having a bunch of rotating chairs uh, in an empty meeting room, and then you just attach an uh, iPad. Uh, on each one of it, and then you have a physical presence uh, of attention uh, um, management uh, that uh, when people talk, you know where they're coming from, you can inhabit those iPods. Um, now, if you have a little bit of budget, uh, then I usually use the telepresence robot called Double. Uh, in now in its third version, it's called Double Three, um, and it's very simple. Um, you can just uh, have your digital double, and you don't have to navigate um, manually. You can because it can sense the room, uh, just like a Roomba. Uh, you can point uh, to someone, and then the robot will walk up uh, to to that person um, remotely, uh, and, and it really brings the the co presencing um, in a kind of higher uh, dimension, a third dimension, whereas Skype is two dimension. So so that is one one branch of the the work that we've been doing. Um, the other. Branch. Yeah, the other branch is the uh, flip side of it, um, is to bring something that uh, used to be um, very face-to-face um, -face experience uh, into a online experience, but still feel that people are very close uh, to each other. Um, and uh, this is what they call the home home hackathon, home hackathon uh, idea. And the home hackathon. Um, Recently, in the Social Innovation Lab, where uh, Ramona um, and, and the team um, ha have always uh, worked, um, we run an online hackathon, part of an online hackathon, with more than 150 people uh, from Korea, from uh, Japan, from U.S., and so on, um, and make it very uh, participative. Um, and so I just pitched it to a document uh, where how they make this kind of co-presencing um, a reality. It involves... A lot of like pre-recording yourself introductions, like uh, home delivery to order the same kind of pizza um, to everybody's home. Um, it involves a, a lot of uh, very interesting designs. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a, that's something that you, you might want to uh, look into. Um, and, and it's now evolving to the degree where um, it's even possible for us to model the online room um, that uh, c closely resembles the room that uh, we uh, were physically in, but 
of COVID cannot be physically in, so that people can like playing a very old uh, role playing computer game um, to feel that they are in the same room that they uh, used to be, um, and then using、uh, video conferencing to attach their、uh, pictures、um, and I mean live pictures、uh, on on top of it. So so this is the. This is a demo.、Uh, you can、uh, not now, but eventually you can just click join、uh, and choose your avatar on the on the right hand side. And the、uh, uh, upshot of it is that you can uh, be uh, walking around with a picture of you、uh, and still chatting. And like this is how how it works in、uh, practice. You can see a photo of me. I can just walk around in this、uh, virtual room. And and chat to people and experience more of the same、um, communication styles. It can even do sound attenuation, meaning that when you break out to groups, you only hear the room、uh, of your smaller group.、Uh, and the technology can work with co、uh, with the co-presenting technology in that if you inhabit one of the podiums, like the、uh, podium on the upper left,、um, you actually inhabit the robot there.、Uh, and so、uh, for you, it's an online like presentation, but for people. Who are in that、uh, vicinity? You actually start incarnating、um, that、uh, avatar. So, so that's the second kind of technology.、Um, the the third kind of technology that we use is called Polis. Um, and at the moment, police is being used、uh, to debate uh, very um, pertinent uh, questions of our time, which usually requires、uh, face-to-face deliberation. Otherwise, people very easily,、um, you know, mistake each other,、uh, and especially people who、um, know each other only from remote.、Uh, but the design of technology makes sure that、um, people can still get into a deliberative mindset,、um, even、uh, when people have、uh, been meeting for the first time. Um, and so this is、um, the the website、uh, that the V Taiwan community uh, is uh, sharing, uh, and it's run by a local media. This particular topic, but the software is、uh, provided by us.、Uh, it's this one,、uh, and and this one、uh, talks about、uh, it's in Mandarin, but this one talks about. Um, how much、um, human rights restriction are we willing、uh, to trade for COVID uh, prevention? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a very pertinent, very important topic、uh, to talk、That's、about,、right. but one that is also very easily、um, politicized. And this one、uh, design makes sure that it, it will not be、uh, politicized, but actually produce a set of useful consensus. So this is a、um, like Slido, but over time, it's like a long Slido <laughs>、uh, that、uh, defines the agenda of our eventual face-to-face meetings. We run this with the AIT, the de facto、um, U.S. Embassy to Taiwan. Also, on the series of four digital dialogues,、uh, that makes sure that we talk about the common vision、uh, between the U.S. and Taiwan on、uh, making Taiwan more uniquely seen in the world,、uh, on economic relationships, security cooperation, people-to-people ties, and so on. And you can read all about it here. So this is what I call listening at scale. So these are the three kind of technologies that are all open source, meaning that. You don't have to pay for license fees, unlike Slido,、uh, and then you can customize.、Uh, here. That's wonderful, and、um, you continue to、um, engage people. And, and this time, you know, we were recording here,、mm-hmm. um, and you know, is what do you wish for some of us trying to have a global connection and you know bring the different opportunity? Maybe、um, some other advice to. All of us here.、Mm-hmm. Uh, what you wish is there some direction that we should think about?、Um, we're open to hear any advice, right, Ramona?、Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we actually we we had a、uh, semi regular, well not not regular anymore,、uh, interview with Ramona <laughs>、uh, and、uh, in the Social Innovation Lab,、um, and I, I think something like that is is very useful, right? Because、uh, there's only so much webinars can do,、um, and and webinar、um, actually only works if you already have a shared value. But webinar doesn't build a shared value,、uh, and and so a, a value building exercise、uh, before any webinar、um, in a sort of、uh, like deep conversations or even just fireside chats、um, among、uh, two or three people, but not more than three people,、um, I think is is essential,、uh, especially in, around this kind of time、um, that we. 
Uh, I think um, we're, we're now saying physical distancing. We're no longer saying social distancing because we want to be socially very connected um, despite the physical distancing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right, so, so for, for human beings to build um, a, a social bonding, of course, uh, the, the food and the music and whatever uh, is essential and that we can replicate somewhat uh, remotely, but nothing replaces a, a good face-to-face -face, uh, conversation um, across one and a half meters now, of course, uh, and so, <laughs> so, 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 so more face-to-face, -face, but two or three people only, um, conversations that are one and a half meters across, um, that uh, gets broadcasted or at least recorded uh, as we are doing now, um, that engages people, I think uh, is yeah. better format than webinars, uh, and that is, I would say, a prerequisite to webinars uh, for people to first get uh, the nonverbal cues um, in a more informal setting, like not lecture, an informal setting, before yeah. you can uh, say that uh, we're, we're connecting across cultural boundaries. Because um, otherwise, uh, you're basically just um, sharing the, the kind of one um, aspect, like the startup aspect uh, of uh, very diverse coaches, uh, but the, that particular aspect although very transmissible over Skype, um, is also maybe the least interesting of that person if you're going to consider that person as a friend, right? Because yes. <laughs> in the physical meeting, startups or whatever, other, it's just an excuse for us to hang out together. Uh, so <laughs> so why, why, why should we let Skype uh, <laughs> dictate that uh, it's no longer the, this excuse for us to hang out together, but rather somehow that we have to put our attention on it's not fair. So that's my main uh, suggestion. Yeah, thank you. Um, we, when I studied Women's Startup Lab, we just took on the regular accelerator model, which is three months. And often women couldn't leave home to be in the Silicon Valley three months, right? It's just kids and why not? It's, it's just too much. And, but it doesn't mean that they're not qualified for building a great company. So I radically stepped in and said, it's going to be two weeks and my team have a threat to leave the the company. That's crazy. There's no way you can provide a valuable accelerator from three months to two weeks. And I said, give me a time because that's where they can be away and how we can intensify the experience and learning. And that's where uh, we came up and uh, with the, having this Hito house where people live together, intense environment for two weeks. Uh, so that really created a lot of bonding, a lot of a deep conversation. And not just the you trying to figure out yourself, other get to know you. So they start using their brain to tell you all the things that you never realize what's possible for your startup as well as you as an entrepreneur. So, you know, uh, with that, um, with Wise24 too, it's not about event, but how could we bring people together, but to the point of a meaningful connection? And uh, I will... Um, Definitely figure out uh, how people can get together even before the event. Um, part of a collaborate to win model, we had all entrepreneurs had to practice together versus other competition, right? You, you only, you compete, so you don't help out each other. <laughs> you just meet on the day, on the stage. In this case, is they got together. Uh, so uh, because of that, by the time they finish their pitch, some of them actually uh, cry because of the joy or relief, but the, because so much of the bonding too. So, um, you know, I'll take that. Um, there was a point, and, and obviously you would work with Ramona. You, you are all about people, right? All the connections. So we'll put something together even before the event. So we have a very meaningful connection and conversation. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I know um, its time is almost up. Yeah, and uh, and I want to mm -hmm. officially invite you to be our official advisor uh -huh. for for Wise Twenty Four. Yeah. So I I have to wear an advisor hat or something. What what does that entail? No, a little a necktie like this, the bow tie. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for joining us. Yeah, <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. So, um, so uh, just to uh, logistically, uh, is seven a.m. sounding like a good idea to you, or it should be a.m. Or, or something like that? 
uh, uh, event day. Early, early is the better, right? Early time that um, maybe we can put the placeholder um, and it's just to make sure that everything else is uh, work around it. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, okay, I think that's that's good. Uh, and so uh, we will just put it on 7 to 8.30. That, that, yes. that, that, does that work for you? Okay, it does. It works. And the Taiwan team, Taiwan team need your help that uh, please also record the small one like last time and then so we can we can put it on. Yeah, so okay. yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a built-in Skype function for that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, you, you have the hearts one. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right, all right, all right. So, so, so I've I've re reserved uh, seven to eight uh, and to eight thirty if necessary uh, okay. for, the, for the for the wise call. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank we'll you. give you an update along the way. So, um, I hope this is not the last time we talk and mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. You know, next time it's like June 18. Hopefully, we'll connect again um, and uh, let you know. So, okay. and, uh, hopefully, one day we can all go back to Silicon Valley and stay in the Woman's Star Lab house because mm -hmm. only only VIP can stay there, and you are the one of the VIP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and we will have yeah. fireside talk. That, that's yeah. Awesome. So that's awesome. And before that, maybe you can rent a double three and just put it there, and I can incarnate uh, <laughs> the robot staying in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we need to try that. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. So, so are you fine with us just publishing this this video or? Uh, do you need editing or anything like that? I, I think we can just share, right? Because it's just raw, it's honest. We didn't talk about um, <laughs> Yeah. <you know. laughs> okay. We, we did the, all the funky heart things. Yeah, that's, so that's right. That's right. Cool. And we need more people. We need more crazy people. Want to change your world, join us. So okay. very welcome. Yeah. Okay. Here's to all the crazy peoples. Here. Yay! Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Yay. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Awesome. Yes. 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 Ari, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I love you too. Okay. All I right. Will... 26 so minutes. You're still recording. Yes. Uh, I can stop recording now. Okay.